Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the very best top three nanties to buy for photo editing here at the end of 2018. When it comes to buying a, the right NAS for photo editing, there's a lot of factors to bear in mind. Most NAS server devices do run at one gigabit ethernet, that's the network of most homes and small offices, and this speed is enough to edit files up to about 20 meg. Under that, even at, at that point, the minute you're editing lots of files and creating thumbnails, and editing files all the time with lots of them on the go and large folders to deal with, this is when some NASs can struggle because it isn't just about the files you're editing, it's all the transmission of data constantly all the time. And particularly when you've got a network that's shared with other devices that can really minimize the throughput and the read and write for you. So these are the NASs I'm going to talk about today, these top three, that right now at the end of 2018 are the ones that give you the best support as a photo editor. And once again, I've said first, second, third, but it could be any any order really because they're all kind of target focused to a different kind of user and that's why I've included them. Each one of them is a rough approximate same sort of price. I don't think any of the ones on our list are going to cost you more than a grand and I think one of them is even as low as 600 nicker. But these NASs are the ones that are going to give you the right kind of access to your photos for editing, uh, collaboration, group work and more. Now. What makes them all important and what makes any NAS important for 10 GBE um, editing or 1 GBE editing or just basically editing images, large scale or not, are the following. First and foremost, something called non-linear um, editing. And non-linear editing or NLE is the ability to edit a file that lives on a remote location without ruining the original copy. And NAS needs to support NLE to be a good NAS for photo editing, because the last thing you want to do is edit the original file and risk screwing it up. You want to make sure you've got that fail safe, and that's what NLE will give you. And NLE is something that's supported by Final Cut, DaVinci, and stuff like that. Not just photo and Photoshop and stuff like that, but video editing too. We'll save that for the other video though. Next, ideally the NAS either has to arrive with 10 gigabit Ethernet or have the option of 10 GBE down the line for when your files get bigger. Because 10 GBE is definitely something you should be thinking about. And it's something I talk about on this channel all the time. So do bear that in mind and make sure you factor that into your purchase, whether you go for one of these three that I recommend or any other NAS. Finally, make sure that the CPU has an excellent floating point and can support you. Because having a CPU, judging a CPU by its power is not enough. You need to know that it is either efficient or that it gives it supports the functions you're going to go for. In some cases, it's better to go for some low rent ARM based CPU that's based on just low power consumption compared with some behemoth Celeron from Intel because that CPU might be better suited to your needs. So do make sure it's got a good floating point and file handling abilities that are suitable to your requirements. But apart from that, it's pretty good. I mean, if you don't want to look down 10 GBE, you can look at ones that have got multiple LAN ports on the rear and they will give you, again, a great support for growing the editing of your photos and files over time. Again, most NASs you can buy, but it's the extent to which they will work and the effectivity that they will work that you'll see the difference. How many times have you been editing a work in any number of packages and the screen goes grey, it's not responding, and that's nothing to do with your hardware or the file. It is the transmission between you and the NAS. And these are three NASs that should open the door for you and allow you to edit photos easily without worrying about that kind of lag. So, on to the first one. Okay, so my first NAS is one I mentioned in the previous video about 10 GBE. Namely, this is the Synology DS1817. It was released coming up on 18 months to two years ago. This is not a new NAS. And don't think the NASs I'm talking about today were all released this year, because it isn't the case. This device is still a great NAS to buy at this time, particularly for photo editors, thanks to two 10 GBE ports and continued support of Synology's DSM 6.2 software. It arrives for about 750 quid and it has both 1 GBE and two 10 GBE ports on the rear, 10 G base T, the better one of the two. Um, the CPU inside is a quad core Annapurna based CPU, and that is a quad core 1.7 gigahertz CPU, which is real good for file handling and a good bit of oomph there connected to it. 
It also arrives with three years of manufacturer's warranty, which is very good, and it's an eight bay, which means you can expand your storage both internally by adding drives as you want and when you need and the RAID accordingly, as well as adding the expansion device via eSATA, two of them in fact, two of the DX517s, and giving you a maximum over time of 18 bays of storage, a great little NAS. And the good thing is about this device that it, it the retail cost, because it's a little older than the other NASs around at the moment, you're getting the price tag at about 750 quid without the VAT, without the hard drive media. You're getting that at a price that most 8 bays without 10 GBE are going for these days. Don't believe me? Look up the DS1819 Plus, the DS1817 Plus. This arrives with 10 GBE connectivity and it's great for photo editing and even video editing, hence why it made some of my other videos as well. But in terms of you know support, in software, it is great. Everything from Apple Time Machine to um, Synology's own great applications for file handling of photos. That Synology Moments app is great. And I'm hoping they're gonna introduce a better depth of editing tools with that. But otherwise at the moment, it's still a great bit of software. And with that CPU inside and those connections on the outside, as well as the option of adding SSDs for some of those hard drive base to enable SSD caching, you can remove bottlenecks internally and externally on your network and have a great, robust, long-term storage solution for the editing of your files. Next up is a QNAP, and what a QNAP. This device arrived um, just under a year ago, the QNAP TS453 BT3. It's a four bay this time around, and it retails for about 900 quid. I think it's about 920 pounds, give or take, without the VAT and without hard drive me. It is not a cheap NAS. Remember, any NAS you look at today, go to SPAN, they're the best for it. Anyway, this device arrives not only with four bays of RAID enabled storage, but it arrives with two Thunderbolt 3 ports, so if you're utilizing Thunderbolt in your operation environment, this has definitely got to have your attention. It arrives with a 10 GBE port. It arrives with two internal SSD bays, M2 based, for SSD caching without having to give up the hard drive for storage on the front. It's got multiple 10 G, um, uh, HDMI ports on the rear as well as USB ports for external storage, but moreover, utilizing USB and HDMI, you can create a standalone machine, a Linux uh, based desktop PC if you like, with Linux station completely for free, or you can create a virtual machine utilizing the internal hardware, a Windows VM on this that can be accessed over the internet or locally, or moreover, utilize it as a standalone surveillance solution. But what this is about is photo editing. What makes this NAS good for photo editing? There's just the insane number of throughput options and the way this NAS can be used in your existing workflow of take the pictures, get the pictures there, edit the pictures on a Mac or a PC, then put them on a NAS, NAS, network distribution, adding da 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 da. This means you can replace all of that in the middle with this one device. Connect an SD card reader, you can transfer your files via an SD card reader, USB, directly onto the NAS. Then edit via Thunderbolt or 10GBE directly to the NAS and edit those files and photos that you've created, those big raw SLR, DLSR, 100 meg photos on this device easily. Then utilize the other Thunderbolt ports. You can connect multiple Thunderbolt devices or the 10 GBE or the 1 GBE ports of which there's two and connect that to an existing network. And then that has got your, your distribution taken care of both on the network and the internet. It is a complete time-saving device. And although it costs a couple of hundred quid more than that 8 bay we talked about from Synology, this gives you a much better hardware spec, a better CPU, the J3455. That CPU available now um, in this device is a quad core 1.5 gigahertz CPU that could be burst up to 2.3. On top of that, expandable memory, expandable storage by an additional 16 drives over USB 3. Insane. It even comes with a bloody remote control. It is a good NAS, a solid NAS, and arrives with a whole host of software and hardware applications. The software isn't as good as Synology's, but if you intend to use your own third-party software like Elements or Photoshop to edit your files and photos, then you're not gonna have to worry about that. What you are getting is a great network and workflow improving um, photography NAS, and it's why I recommend it so highly. 
In third place, it's another Synology, but this Synology is different to that first one in a number of ways. It retails for about 650 quid, so it's the lowest price NAS on our top three photo editing NAS list. But the reason I've included it in this list is a couple of good reasons. One is one of Synology's few six bay NASs. So it's a great middle ground in terms of storage. You've got six bays there, so it's between the four and the eight of the previous units. It also arrives with a CPU inside, an Intel based one, the C3538. It's an Atom quad core 2.1 gigahertz CPU. It's got four LAN ports on the rear, which you can link aggregate for up to four GBE or use individually but it also has a PCIe upgrade slot that lets you decide what part of your workflow you want to improve. Now this six bay will let you, for example, either part populate or fully populate uh, the device and it has access to all that great Synology software mentioned earlier. And you can put SSDs inside some of those bays for SSD caching and then use the PCIe card to add 10 GBU with a 100 quid upgrade card to your network. Alternatively, you can put an M2 SSD card inside this device and then just connect um, six hard drive bays inside, uh, hard drives in those bays, then utilize the M2 SSD cache by installing that card and vastly improve internal read and write speeds. Then utilize the multiple network ports to connect multiple users to edit files on this NAS. You don't have to just connect this to an existing network. You can, but you don't have to. Imagine a NAS that has four users connected via one GBE onto the device where all of the drives are inside, all raided together to give you that live access storage to edit files between 20 and 30 meg in size. If you wanna go bigger than that, that's when you have to look at M2 SSD cache or 10 GBE. But the reason it's in my top three is just the sheer weight functionality it gives you at this price and allows you to choose which way forward with upgrading because the previous two NASs we talked about, as good as they are, they lock you in with what you're buying. They either force you to buy 10 GBE and Thunderbolt and stuff like that and let you pick which one you're going to use and maybe ignore the other, or they lock you in at the level of storage and 10 GBE in the case of the Synology. What this one does is let you pave your own way. It gives you all of the opportunities and then lets you take each one forward as you see fit and then scales the price down to make sure that you aren't overspending unnecessarily. And it's why the DS1618, this six bay, is a very attractive photo editing NAS. If you want to take it further and that CPU is not beefy enough, there are other ones, the 3018 XS. But for me, that's why this six bay is in my top three photo editing NASs of 2018. That combined with, again, that Apple Time Machine support that support of non-linear editing and that Synology Moments app we mentioned earlier, as well as four LAN, three USB 3, expandability by another 10 drives with a DX517 um, expansion unit. And again, three years of warranty. It is just a great little NAS and a perfect middle ground for those starting out on editing over the network and don't quite know where to spend the extra money in as an investment. So this saves you from being locked in at seven, eight, 900 pounds early on but going for the base model and then upgrading with that money in the best way that suits you. But those have been my top three photo editing NASs for to buy at the end of 2018. If you've enjoyed this or found it useful, click like and subscribe. If you want to buy your NAS, visit the guys at span.com. If you want to learn about NAS, nascompares.com. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.